What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com, H A W G Sports.com. Razorback football is just 18 days away. We're just like 11 days away from the start of the college football season. There's plenty to talk about. We're going to get into all of it. Danny West is also going to join us to talk some recruiting, all that more on Hog Sports Live. Very little show prep today because there's so much to talk about. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? I mean, there's endless conversations we have with position battles, depth chart. Of course, as I mentioned, Danny West is going to join us to talk about recruiting. We're going to help. Uh, we're going to ask you to help drive the show today with your questions. So go ahead and get those in, and we'll get to them. But first, before we get started. Not mentioning how to watch or any of that stuff. I just want to talk about our 75% off deal because I know this is a deal that a lot of you have been waiting on. Uh, you probably saw it last year. You passed it up. It's a it's a fantastic deal. So uh, just to give you a little bit of a insight on, on what we're offering here, 75% off of our annual rate, it's $0.52 cents a week, two twenty four a month. It breaks down, I mean, to those prices. It's $26.85 all total. $26.85 for the entire year. So with that, you get access to, you know, all of our VIP articles are really heavily researched opinion pieces, our recruiting information, our VIP message board, the Razor's Edge, all the crystal ball stuff. I mean, there's so much stuff throughout the entire 24 seven sports network. You can peek in on all the other team sites throughout the country on their premium message boards. It's a, it's a great service. It's why we do this show. If you like this show, if you like the walk and talk, you want to figure out other ways to support us because, you know, we're not doing this because it makes money. You know, our bread's buttered at hogsports.com. So if you want to figure out ways to support us, if you want to see what we got for our VIP members because you like the free stuff that we do, then go to hawgsports.com. There's no promo code or anything. You'll see the banner ad for 75% off. Just click that and sign up. You'll be glad you did. And uh, it's a fantastic deal. It's a limited time. It'll be gone very soon. I think uh, it's just two days we're running this. So, I mean, we've got like, what, 30-something hours left of this special. So definitely sign up at hawgsports.com. This deal ends on the 18th at uh, at 11 uh, 10 59 p.m uh, on august 18th so go sign up right now if you haven't done so already you'll be glad you did i promise you will people sign up that's our hardest thing getting people through the door once they get through the door it's always kind of like wow didn't know this was here we don't have a lot of people cancel so we like to get you in on a on a nice very inexpensive deal i mean this is a fan this is the best deal that we offer 75 percent off so you're getting in on the best one that we offer all right on to college football. So, what are they? Uh, they're ten pra- nine practices in right now, over eleven days. Nine practices in. They've done full pads. They've had their first scrimmage. We know about the scrimmage results. That kind of mixed a little bit for the offense. KJ Jefferson had uh, a touchdown pass on a fifteen yard out to Kendall Catalan. But uh, aside from that, maybe some poor decisions down, uh, you know, in the low red zone area. They had to settle for a couple field goals, which, by the way, Cam Little made three field goals in the scrimmage, hit a 52-yarder in the scrimmage. Also, in an earlier practice, hit a 57-yarder. Sam Pittman said it would have been good for 65 yards. So, sounds like uh, encouraging things in the kicking game there, an area that's, you know, been a little bit scary. We've had a lot of stuff uh, just in the last day uh, on special teams because we spoke to Scott Fountain yesterday, uh, spoke to Jordan Silver, the the long snapper. So we have a lot of information on how things are going right now on special teams. Of course, talked to Sam Pittman uh, extensively about it on Saturday. But it feels like you know they're really focused on getting a playmaker back there, and they want a guy that can field punts, obviously. But really. That's important. But they would be willing to go with somebody who doesn't field it as well as maybe another guy to get that playmaking ability out there. And that's something that we've seen lacking for a decade now. It's been like 10 years since Arkansas has had a punt return for a touchdown. It's crazy. In 2011, Joe Adams had four, four of them that year. But they just can't get it done. Um, but they're, if I, I think if they went right now, if they had a game tomorrow, then they're going with Greg Brooks. So you can read all that content. There's just the breakdowns. There's also one on kick returners. Uh, and we'll get into that a little bit. But I just really wanted to – I mean – Nebraska and Illinois, guys. Nebraska and Illinois play in 11 days, August 28th. Champaign, Illinois. I know it's Big Ten. I know it's not SEC. I know it's not Arkansas. But it's former Arkansas coach Brett Bielema returning as a head coach to the college game. There is some, some intrigue there for you. I'll be watching that game. There's no question about it. I'll be watching that game. Can't wait for it. 
anything. I'll take anything right now. But the fact that it's Brett Bielema returning to college uh, and facing Nebraska and Champaign, Illinois, that's, that's intriguing to me. Very intriguing to me. All right. Again, get your questions in because we are we're going to have a, you know, a very feedback driven show today. You know, just going through everything we talked about punt return, kick return, you know, the guy the main guys I think to watch uh, on punt return. I mentioned Greg Brooks, but and again, I think he would be the guy right now, but Bryce Stevens is another intriguing candidate. Um, you know, Nick Turner spent a lot of time time back there. I think a dark horse might be Chase Lowry also. He, who has spent some time back there. Nathan Perotti is a guy that they feel very confident can field it. I don't know that he brings a lot to the table in terms of, uh, you know, making that first guy miss. And that's what's so important when we're talking about punt return. It's about making that first guy miss. And it's it's different than kick return. To me, you want a, you know, a bit lighter guy there. Kick return, you want a guy that can really hit it. Uh, kick return – Ladarius Bishop it feels like he might be the guy there. Raheem Sanders has also been there. I love Raheem Sanders, 6'2", 225. I like a big guy there. I really like Miles Slusher just based on what I saw from him in the spring. I haven't seen him back there in, in fall camp. Josh Oglesby has also worked back there as well as T.J. Hammonds. But to me, you need a bigger guy, you know, that can just hit it, get up some speed very quickly. People kind of bounce off of him. That's what you want at kick returner. And uh, it's a difficult it's difficult to figure it out because you know we've talked a little bit about the quarterback situation and how hard it is to gauge how effective a guy like KJ Jefferson can be because you know he's not he's not taking hits he's not getting tackled how good of a tackle breaker he is i think he's probably pretty good you know how well does he run through tackles just in the open field we don't know because you get tagged off and you're down you know so and i think that's part of it too and we'll get to that a little bit but uh, with punt return and kick returner, you don't want to do that very – I mean, they might do it like three times on punt return just to give these guys a little bit of a look. But kick return, you can't do it just because the collision can be so violent. So it's not worth risking. So you just kind of have to put as much pressure on those guys as possible. They hit them with bags and stuff like that. Just do everything that they can. Kind of like with kicker, you know, they're screaming in their ear and stuff, trying to create as much commotion as possible and rattle them as much as possible. But that's about all you can go on because you're not going to hit those guys live. So special teams been interesting, but it feels like on the other side of it, Cam Little is emerging as the starting field goal guy, uh, just based on how the coaches talk about him. And then I would say, as far as kickoff man, Vito Calvaruso is your guy there. And then uh, and punter, it sounds like Sam Lloyd maybe has a little bit of an edge there, but he has been injured. Uh, so Reed Bauer has always been there too. You know, he's, he's kicked for him or punted for him in the past. Uh, both those guys are battling at punter as well as John Stephen Jones. I think Cade Renfro might be also holding um, back there also. So uh, you've got John Stephen Jones on um, – on holder, of course, Jordan Silver is going to be your starting snapper, but your holder, John Stephen Jones, um, Reed Bauer, Sam Loy, and I think Cade Renfro was the other one. So, at quarterback, it's it's just an interesting battle behind KJ Jefferson. KJ Jefferson's the man. I mean, they've got they have brought him up really the right way. When you think about KJ, like. It's such a difficult position to figure out quarterback, obviously. But when you think about the tangible aspects of K.J. Jefferson, I mean, he fits a lot of the qualifications you look for. He's a third-year sophomore. He hasn't been rushed along. He's he's had opportunities to get in games, both as a freshman and then, of course, as a sophomore last year against Missouri. What did he throw for, like, 274 yards, three passing touchdowns, a rushing touchdown? Only 54% completion percentage, but he took Arkansas into the fourth quarter of that game with a 10-point lead against Missouri – and Arkansas scored 15 points in the fourth quarter. That's 25 points that Missouri had to overcome in the fourth quarter to beat Arkansas. I don't know that I'm going to put that on K.J. Jefferson. And they got 27 points, by the way. We know that. So he's had, I mean, to me it feels like an ideal upbringing uh, as a quarterback at Arkansas. Now, he was a guy that entered very raw and needed that development, and he's had time to get it. So I think there's, you know, from a tangible aspect, arm strength, running ability – size. Uh, he seems very well liked. People know that I've talked before about robot quarterbacks. It's just like, yes, sir. Uh, you know, and they just, and they just talk like this and it's just, and, it, and it's, you know, KJ is not like that. He's a different kind of character, different personality. I like that. I think your quarterback needs to have some character personality about that. I think we all saw him getting mic'd up and, you know, just how well he interacted with teammates and Sam Pittman and, um, you know, just, you got to be a little funny. You got to be kind of loose. That's what you want at quarterback. You do not want a stoic robo quarterback. 
You don't. Um, and KJ's not that. So I think he fits a lot of the qualifications in that, but you just never know when it comes down to decision making. How well is he going to protect the football? Is he going to be careless with it? Is he going to make poor decisions? Is he going to be aware of the first down mark? Because we saw a problem with that in the LSU game his freshman year. There's all kinds of things like that that we just don't know. The pieces around him are there. I mean, they return four starters on the offensive line from the last two years and possibly five from last year. Possibly all five starters, depending on how the left guard battle goes. And right now, Brady Latham is uh, starting ahead of Luke Jones, and they're just going back and forth. They're trying different converse, com- combinations. We've seen that extensively on the defensive line. But Latham's also probably your backup left tackle. So he's got that on the offensive line. He returns both you know guys that played a lot at tight end last year in Hudson Henry, Blake Kern. Uh, he returns Traylon Smith in the backfield and some intriguing freshmen. And we'll get to those guys. And then at wide receiver – uh, you know, he's got Traylon Burks. And it would be nice to have had Mike Woods, but I think, you know, again, I've said that hurts more in perception than in practice, I think. I think they've got some candidates. Right now I would say probably, and this has changed just since yesterday, but I would say probably Debion Warren uh, and Jaqueline Crawford. If not Jaqueline Crawford, then maybe Trey Knox. And I didn't see Trey Knox out there yesterday, uh, along with Traylon Burks, of course. So the pieces are around him. And I think he's got a defense that's also – I shy from saying pretty good or good or anything, but let's just say okay. Let's just say they're okay. That's a huge step forward from where they've been. Now, they started off, you know, being pretty good last year, and, you know, that that tailed off the last four games or so, obviously. But uh, so let's just say they're okay. Let's be cautious, all right? And, again, you know, like I said the last show, you have a tendency to drink Kool-Aid and stuff, but I still am feeling better about where this team is depending on K.J. Jefferson, and we should know a lot these first couple of weeks on K.J., Malik Cornsby, you know, is probably not as accurate as they'd like him. But, you know, he's a guy that he just has breathtaking speed. And I think that's what the coaches are really so intriguing, intrigued with him about. Um, you know, Sam Pittman said on Saturday when he goes out there, he's probably the fastest guy on the field. I mean, not since Matt Jones have you probably said that about an Arkansas quarterback. So, obviously, they'd like him to brush up, get a little better, better as a passer. But his speed – and I mean, guys, like it's not a joke. Like when he's, you know – sprinting out or something and there's field in front of him I mean he's eating up 15 yards before you even know it and he just glides just a smooth gliding runner and then you know you've got Cade Renfro who I think may be the leader right now for that third spot and then probably Lucas Coley after him and then I would say it's probably you know Landon Rogers who has a lot of upside but enrolled late as a freshman uh, and John Stephen Jones probably you know after those guys that's probably where things are right now We'll talk about a few more spots, but I'm going to get to Danny West, and then we'll, we'll kind of break it up with some recruiting stuff, and then we'll flip it over. But at running back, uh, you know, I think Traylon Smith has a lot of possibilities. Um, you know, I think he could probably run for 1,000 yards. He was dinged up and didn't practice on Monday. Uh, they think A.J. Green will be back for the next scrimmage. That's really important, being that he's a freshman back, but they really like the way he's starting to come along, starting to play a little bit faster. Raheem Sanders has been running with the first group, and he had a good scrimmage, but he ran with the first group yesterday with Traylon Smith out. Uh, I still think Josh Oglesby, T.J. Hammonds are more like specialty types of types of back, and we'll see Dominic Johnson possibly in some specialty roles there too, uh, but they are working him more and more at tight end. And, you know, tight end is a, is a position that's not very deep, but if they can stay healthy, then they're going to be okay there. If they can stay healthy with Blake Kern and Hudson Henry throughout the season, then they're going to be okay at tight end. If they don't, then there's going to be a little bit of trouble. And we know Sam Pittman would like to run a little more t- two tight end stuff. I have not seen them run any two tight end stuff so far in practices during the open times that we've had, but we know that he wants to do that. Uh, We talked about wide receiver a little bit. We hit on the running backs. I think we covered just about every spot on offense and the offensive line. uh, Obviously, there's that one big battle going on over there. Sam Pittman did say Takias Crawford probably going to be in there too deep when all is said and done. Uh, I think he could possibly eventually steal some reps away from, from Dalton Wagner over at right tackle. But And I've said before, I think the offensive line is going to be better than maybe half over half of the opponents that they face. You know, the three non-conference, I could see them being better than Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Missouri, uh, Auburn possibly, and maybe somebody else there in the SEC. I just think the experience that they have – now, they're going to still run into trouble against Georgia, Alabama, you know, some of these these programs, possibly Texas – um, they're going to still run into some trouble against those. But their experience and having a full year in the system is going to make them better. And I think that's another thing that people don't realize because I view Arkansas last year as being at a huge disadvantage because 
in a COVID year, they brought in a new head coach and two new new coordinators. I think it probably hurt them in recruiting a little bit, and I know it hurt them on the field from not having that spring, not having all that time to really go over stuff, just Zoom meetings and stuff like that, not knowing each other's personalities, each other's tendencies, just kind of learning that stuff throughout the season. And now they have that. They have all that stuff. So I think that Arkansas has the makeups of a team that should go to a bowl game. Okay, I'm definitely leaning on the side of should go to a bowl game right now. I started at six wins entering fall camp. Am I going to five? Am I staying at six? Am I going to seven? I got to be honest, I'm leaning towards seven a little bit right now. I just think that they have the right makeup to do that. And again, so much of it depends on the unknown of the most important position on the field, and that's quarterback. But I like the way the players talk about KJ, and not just what they say, but again, their body language, how they can't wait to talk about him. Uh, I like the what the dynamics that I see, you know, around on the field uh, when they go to break and stuff, how they interact with KJ. And I like the way that they act around their coach. I like the way that they feel about Sam Pittman. And I know it hadn't been there in the past. And that's – I mean, guys, it all starts right there. You have to believe in that guy. you got to believe in Sam Pittman. you got to want to fight and play for him. And we talked before about how those guys would not fight for Chad Morris. They just wouldn't. They didn't give a damn. They didn't. I'm sorry. They did not care about him. They didn't care if he got his ass kicked against Western Kentucky to save his job. They didn't care. Now, and we've talked about Brett Bielema, and Brett Bielema had his flaws, but those guys loved him. They would fight for him. They did it against Coastal Carolina. They did it against Ole Miss. They did it against Missouri. They did it against Mississippi State. Now, they lost – what two of those games they beat Ole Miss they beat Coastal Carolina they came back in both of those games against with Chad Morris as the head coach Arkansas uh, gets whipped against Coastal Carolina and they get slaughtered against Ole Miss because they they would have quit they didn't do that for Brett Bielema and I'm not saying that it's the same type of deal I think it's a little bit different with Sam Pittman I think that Pittman's probably more likable and not that he's a big teddy bear because he's not if you go out there and see him at practice, he can turn from, you know, just, oh, hi, you know, just a nice good old boy to uh, – he gets this certain kind of scowl uh, to him, you know. And, uh, and I, just, I like the way he coaches. He's very encouraging to him. And at the same time, you know, he'll get in your rear end also. I mean, he's not, he's not going to shy away from that. So, before we get over to defense, we're going to jump to Danny West. Danny West 247 on Twitter, at Danny West 247 on Twitter. Best recruiting man in the business, not just at Arkansas, but in the country, in my opinion. Trey Betty. Danny, how you doing, brother? Doing good, man. Doing good. Uh, it's been busy, I can tell you that much. I can always tell when football season's rolling around, everybody wants to – not everybody, but more people want to have me on their show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just came so off a show a with uh, with Phil Elson, I know. That's and, right, uh, yeah. Yeah, and now here with us. But, uh, well, I wanted to take a break real quick, Danny, because we've been talking about the offense and just breaking down my feelings on the positions and, and everything <laughs> like that. Um, okay. Before we, But before we get into recruiting, what are your thoughts right now? You've been on basically every Zoom meeting. They won't let us have, you know, as many people as we'd want in attendance at the press conferences, but you've been watching on Zoom and, and following everything. And I'm uh, just curious about where you think this team is right now. Well, I'll start with the offensive line like I always do. I think they're better there. And I think that's that can't be overlooked. You know, they needed to get a lot better there. I think they finished – 13th in sacks allowed last year. Mm -hmm. uh, they were 13th in, in short yardage running, you know, like third and one to three. And then you look at the low red zone, just trying to punch it in and rushing attempts. They were, I want to say, 11th in the conference last year. You add all those three things together, that's not good, no. you know. I mean, you, you had to get bigger and stronger, and they did that. Uh, they did it through the weight room and recruiting, and uh, we'll see some of that from recruiting start to translate this fall, I guess. But um, I, I've heard you mention it time and time again. Most of their size, they're bigger guys or young guys. Mm -hmm. So that's something to look forward to in the future. But for the, the time being, I still think they're bigger, more experienced, obviously. And I think they love that coach. Uh, yeah. Not Pitt, not Pittman. They love him too. But I think they love Cody Kennedy. Love him. That's so, the word that I've gotten on him too, Danny. That yeah. they and that and it matters. You know, it you have to you have to love them or fear them or something. 
and we'll uh, respect them. Yeah, yeah. There has to be some kind of you know. Petrino got it across through fear and respect, <laughs> but uh, yeah. you know there there are more ways to skin a cat, and uh, and it, it does feel like they have that for Cody Kennedy right now. Yeah, and you know I start there because it, I think it's the most important thing they had to fix. I feel pretty good about KJ. I think he's you know we come out of the scrimmage Saturday. Was anybody really surprised to hear that he was just, you know, kind of, it was an okay day for KJ? Mm -hmm. It seems to be a pattern with him. Mm -hmm. Maybe he is just a gamer, you know? Maybe you fill up the stadium, he turns the lights on, and he flips a switch. Right. Well, and and, and, so that's okay. You would prefer him to go out and be lights out in a scrimmage. But maybe it's just KJ, man. Well, I'm not saying he's Matt Jones, but Matt Jones is like that. I mean, yeah, Matt Jones would be Matt Jones would be the last guy when they back when they would run gassers after practice. He'd be you know the <laughs> fastest guy on the field, but he'd be the last guy doing his gassers, just how he was. But when the lights came on, he was he was Matt Jones. Uh, and right. and also, Danny, you know, we have to consider that the Razorback defense is on the other side of the field here. And mm-hmm. I think in an ideal situation, yeah, you want the offense to do well, but. What does that say about the defense? The defense should be ahead of the offense right now. Now they should start chipping away. You know, by the time we get to this second scrimmage, we should start, start seeing evening out. Yeah. right. Should start evening out a little bit more because the offense is so much more about getting in sync and timing and all that stuff. Whereas defense is reacting and they're seeing these guys run the same plays over and over and over again. Yep. You know, so um, in that sense, you probably do want the defense to outperform the offense. Plus, you take away KJ Jefferson's legs. And the fact that he knows – I mean, K.J. is going to – like the option in a, a third and two for K.J., it oh, might yeah. be, you know, pretty enticing for him just to keep it and bull over people. And that's a big yeah. part of his game, not just running in the open field, but that's kind of taken away in these scrimmages also. I agree. You know, it goes back to something we used to notice with uh, Rafe Peavy, bringing back a blast from the past, right? Yeah. I mean, Rafe, you know, to his credit, I, I felt like he had a fair point. You know, you take away Rafe's running ability and just make him a pocket guy, eh, maybe he's not going to stand out in front of some of those other guys. But, man, when he took off, and Mm -hmm. you know, he's not Bleak Hornsby. I heard you mention earlier in the show about Hornsby's uh, burst, and it's very, very real. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I always thought that was was kind of the case for even a guy like Rafe, uh, who was – not as good of a runner as Malik or KJ or some of these other guys, but was still very adequate. And when you take that away from them, yeah, it's easy to come away unimpressed, in my opinion. Danny West joining us again. You can follow Danny at Danny West 24-7. If you haven't signed up at hogsports.com, you can do so right now for 75% off. It's a heck of a deal. Breaks down to, I mean, 52 cents a week. 52 cents a week, $26.85 for the whole year. I mean, that's that's a hell of a deal right there. If you've ever wanted or curious to sign, uh, to see what we have behind the curtains for our VIP subscribers, now is the time to do it. I know a lot of you have been waiting on this deal, and it's finally here. It's just here for, well, we started it last night, so it's less than 48 hours that we have the deal going. So go to hawgsports.com uh, to sign up. Danny, I want to take you over to tight ends and Dow Loggins right now because – Dow, I think one of the concerns when he came here, and we know he's a former Razorback and everything like that, but one of the concerns when Dow Loggins came to Arkansas was that he didn't have college coaching experience aside from being an analyst one year at Penn State. And how was that going to play in recruiting? Is he going to know how all that works? And lo and behold, I mean, he's doing as well in a short amount of time as any coach on the staff. He's already got three commitments. Just talk a little bit about the timeline that we've seen with Dow Loggins from him being hired to, uh, to really landing three outstanding recruits. Pretty impressive. And I mean, his official start date was June 14th. I remember being at a camp and, you know, there had been talk that uh, Loggins might be the new coach, the tight ends coach. I look up and there's Dow Loggins standing in front of me. I said, okay, well, that's, that's probably happening. Right. So, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I started reading the message board and some of the comments. Well, can he recruit? We need tight ends in the worst way, and all that's true. You know, uh, they've been down at tight end, as you mm-hmm. well know. But um, you know, I honestly, I never questioned it because you know I've seen him on videos and stuff. I knew he had the personality to be okay, and I think he said it best the other day in his press conference. It's easy for a guy like. Barry Lunny, you know, a Dow Loggins, these type of people that played here mm-hmm. and they get it. I think it's easier for them to, 
you can't BS a kid is what he said. And I, they don't have to. They love the place. It's easy for them to sell. So I felt like he had that in his back pocket coming in here. His personality is great. But then you couple that with his experience in the NFL. And I think that really is what pushed uh, Tyrus Washington over the edge there on July 7th, right? Mm -hmm. So he commits. And everybody, I think, was not really all that surprised. They probably felt pretty good about Tyrus for the long haul. And, uh, you know, credit to Dow for going ahead and wrapping it up. But then this past weekend, I think he really caught a lot of people's attention. Shamar Easter came up here late June. Uh, I think he was going to church camp or coming out of church camp and just wanted to pop in uh, before before it went dead uh, July 1st. So he did that. And then he comes back for the cookout uh, a couple weeks ago uh, to close out the end of July. And, you know, at the time I felt like eh, he's still going to take a while. I bet he still wants to take that Clemson trip this fall. No, man, Dowell has locked that kid up in, uh, I mean, in a short, short time here. Mm -hmm. It's one of the more impressive jobs I can remember. And then you throw in Jaden Ham, a kid that I talked to him after his visit in June, Trey, and it kind of reminded me of Chase Lowry in last year's uh, class. I hung up the phone. I thought, I'm going to be calling him quite a bit, I think. I think Mm -hmm. Arkansas is going to have a really good chance there. And then, of course, I never – felt strongly enough to put in a crystal ball or anything like that. He was just kind of a back burner type that I needed to uh, stay in contact with. Lo and behold, the very next day he commits and you're done with that class next year. Mm -hmm. That's pretty impressive and and has caught a lot of people's attention and good for coach Loggins, man, from everything I know about him, my short time with him. I I think he's a, he's a great dude. It's easy to see why he's having early success, but he's definitely an outlier in that regard. Most of these guys need two or three years after they make that jump. Yeah, he's not much longer than I am. In fact, I remember him from back in college uh, at the University of Arkansas. But uh, he's here, Danny. I mean, he's he wants to be here now. I know that he's bought a house in in Fayetteville, um, and you don't see that a lot of times with coordinators. (laughs) Sometimes they'll, you know, may or assistant coaches will rent a place, but he's bought a house. Uh, a big house, and he has, I think, four <laughs> kids also. He's got that NFL money. He's got four kids. So, you know, I can see, like, coaching, moving, being like a guy that's, like, moved around from, you know, Miami to Cleveland, Chicago, you know, all these places as an offensive coordinator, and you've got a family. You might – I could see a guy wanting to settle down a little bit in one place and, you know, raise his family. And what yeah. better place than the place that he went to college? I mean, if you, if he's like me, I mean, when I left Fayetteville, I was like, how can I get back there? And yep. and so um, – and here I am, and I'm settled in. I don't have any plans to leave. I mean, I've got my family here. This is where I want to be. And I'm sure he's probably no different than that. So he wants to be here, uh, and uh, I think it probably shows with the way he recruits these kids and, and everything like that. I think the way some of the presentations that they've had with Dow, like from his introduction when Sam Pittman just said, I wanted to bring some alumni in here to talk sure. to you guys, has Dow talked to him? And then after the end, he goes, you just met your new offensive line, or you just met your new tight ends coach. And then with uh, Shamar Easter, his announcement – you know, didn't they didn't tell they didn't want Sam Pittman to know about it, and we actually knew before Sam did uh, what was going on. And then they have uh, they put him up on the uh, you know in the media in the uh, team meeting room, and Shamar Easter's up there on the on the screen, and he goes, "What's up, Coach?" He goes, "Not much. What's up with you?" And he goes, "Oh, not much." And, he, and Pittman's like, well, "Something's up. You're on the screen." <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, they committed. so great. Yeah. Hey, Shamar, man, just as a side note, he's he's kind of a little prankster himself, I think. Uh, Believe it or not, Dow Loggins didn't know before his wife knew. Uh, Apparently, from what I'm told, Shamar actually called Dow's wife first and said, hey, I'm going to commit to your husband tomorrow. Don't tell him. I want it to be a surprise. (laughs) And that's probably the most loyal person on the staff is Mm -hmm. the coach's wife, right? Because she didn't mention anything. And he was surprised, too, from what I hear. So a little bit of a, a jokester there, Shamar Easter. He, he had a, had me fooled. I thought he was all quiet and humble. Nah, he's got a, little, got a little humor about him. I like it. That's good. So, Danny, before I let you go, what else could we look for in the world of recruiting? Uh, I know everybody's attention has turned to fall camp, but recruiting oh, never stops. Keep up with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, I – you know, I've said it for the last few times I've been on here. I think this 22 class is, is pretty much winding down at this point. I think mm-hmm. they've probably got two spots left, to be honest. Maybe three, 
you know, if something were to happen, maybe somebody comes off the board. Now, I'm not insinuating that I know anything or anything like that. But, you know, it's recruiting in, in 2021, so anything can happen. But, yeah, I think they're getting down to it for that class, and it's, it's really no coincidence that uh, you've already seen two commits for the uh, 23 cycle. Mm-hmm. They've had a long time now where they're just about full for the current class, and the benefit of that is getting a head start, and they've they've gotten quite a head start for that class. Wouldn't shock me, Trey. I'll go as far as to say, wouldn't shock me if the next commitment is also a 23. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So keep an eye on that. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah, uh, so and I guess they we'll they borrowed they borrowed three from this class, so it's going to be a bit of a smaller class, right. and then right. you're going to want to hold a spot or two for uh, for potential uh, transfers. Also. I would hold two or three, wouldn't yeah. you? Well, this day I and mean, age, nowadays, with immediate eligibility, it's not just yeah. grad transfers; it's a lot of people. So, yeah, I would that's I would right. think two, three. I think that's kind of got to be the norm moving forward. Yeah, especially after you took so many defensive linemen this year, I think they could need a guy or two on the defensive line from the portal next year, and mm-hmm. especially linebackers, all those seniors. That gum, man, they they've got to figure something out there. So, and I bet they will. I bet they'll save a few for that. All right, Danny Dadgum West. Appreciate you joining us, brother. Did I throw it? Oh, I did. I said it. <laughs> All right, man. All right, buddy. We'll thanks. see you. All right, thanks for joining us. All right, everybody. That's Danny West. He does a great job. You know, one of the, so Danny, Danny says Dadgum a lot, it's just in his nature. But uh, he was on a call with somebody on the radio show, and somebody was making fun of him for saying Dadgum. And Danny. And Danny lets one slip. He says, Dad gum. And then he says in his head, he's thinking, Dad gum. <laughs> Dad gum that he said, Dad gum. Uh, Danny does a great job. We're certainly lucky to have him at Hog Sports. And if you want to read his stuff again, 75% off right now for the entire year. Great deal. All right, let's flip it over to defense real quick, and then we're going to get to your questions see what we didn't answer through this. But, you know, defensive line yesterday was all transfers. They, they were in their 3-2-6. They had Markel Lutze at left end. John Ridgeway at nose tackle and uh, Trey Williams at right end. Which I, I really think Trey Williams has a, has a shot to be really good. I just there's so many combinations on the defensive line. It's a great problem to have. I mean, we could talk about it forever. There's so many different possibilities there. So I think you got to feel pretty good about where Arkansas's defensive line is right now. I don't know that they've had the depth that they've had before, and a large reason is because of those three transfers, and all three of them are pushing to start. It's not just like you know, an, another body in there. These guys are pushing guys that, you know, Isaiah Nichols started a lot of games. Eric Gregory started a lot of games. Zach Williams has started. Mateo Soli has started a lot of games. They really like Jashad Stewart also. I mean, there are some – there are some – Tarian Carter came along. You know, linebackers kind of like tied in to me in a lot of ways where you've got Grant Morgan and you've got Hayden Henry, who Hayden Henry has been working with the first group a lot above Bumper Pool. Uh, and bumper pull, of course. Uh, but after that, uh, you start getting a little bit of concern. You know, Andrew Parker's there who's got some experience but hasn't really just, you know, come to the forefront there at that position. Uh, you know, they like Chris Paul, but he's very young. Deion Edwards was hurt yesterday. Um, I think he'll be back pretty soon, though. But uh, he he was he had a little bit of an injury in the, in the scrimmage. Um, so, uh, to me, there's just a little bit of concern at linebacker. Of course, Levi Draper, I don't think we've talked about this. He moved from linebacker to tight end and then hurt his shoulder again, and, and he's done. He's done with football. That's like three times um, in a row that he's hurt his shoulder and just can't, can't get healthy. So, he'll take a medical hardship that will free open a scholarship on the 85, which, again, doesn't include the super seniors that came back. It doesn't open anything up on the 25 recruiting class, but for the whole roster, it does open up a scholarship. And he will remain on scholarship, just can't play football medical hardship so that's the situation there uh the defensive secondary i mean safety is is solid i think i think it's really solid i really like the way miles slushers come along Uh, i think that they have i would say that they have four really and maybe five because malik chavis has done some stuff good too i mean he had a nice deflection the other day in practice when we were watching but i might say i might give them five safeties that they feel really good about <clears throat> excuse me cornerbacks a little less thin but we're starting to see Devin Bush emerge Devin Bush is starting to come up one of the most talked about guys who doesn't play because he's been hurt what happened to Devin Bush well he's running with the second group at left cornerback now all right and really before everything started your left cornerback was Hudson Clark you had Ladarius Bishop behind him and then I believe Kari Johnson was after that 
Kari Johnson might have been on the other side. I think Kiwan Parker was after that. So Kari Johnson was it was it was uh, on the other side. It was uh, Monteric Brown, and then Kari Johnson behind him. But what's happened is a little bit of a shift. You still got Monteric Brown. I think Monteric is one of the more underappreciated defensive players in the entire SEC. I really do. I think he's going to have a really solid year this year. But on the other side, Ladarius Bishop for the last several practice now has emerged as uh, a starter over there. Now, it's, it's not over, but he's he's the starting left cornerback right now for the last several practices. So those are your two guys right there. And then behind Ladarius, you have Devin Bush. And then behind Monteric, they've actually moved – Hudson Clark over behind him, and then Kari Johnson's back behind him. So that's where things are right now with cornerback, but you have to be pleased to see a guy like Devin Bush starting to emerge. Of course, Greg Brooks we talked a little bit about on punt return. Uh, I think Greg Brooks is also dramatically underrated. I thought he uh, was not very good as a freshman at all. I thought he was too light. He struggled in so many categories, but last year I thought he was really solid. I think he'll build on that this year. And then um, that pretty much covers it. I mean – Jalen Catalan was in a green, no contact jersey yesterday, but he still rolled with the first group. Simeon Blair, Joe Fouché, Miles Slusher, Malik Chavis. I mean, I feel like they're in pretty good shape on defense. And, again, I shy away from saying from saying they're going to be good on defense. And a lot of that depends on, you know, how productive the offense is. If it's, you know, this up-tempo offense can put the defense in bad situations all the time. But I feel like they're going to be okay. I feel like – I feel like you'll be proud of on the defense. And I think they have enough depth where, you know, if they get a little bit lucky, they should be okay from a depth standpoint. We talked about special teams already. We've covered the offense. I want to go right into your questions now. Right to your questions. And one more time, sign up for the 75% off deal. You're going to love what you get at hogsports.com. Again, it breaks down to $26.85 for the entire year. I mean, this is something that normally costs, I think it's $107.40. I don't know why that's the price, but it is $107.40. But $26.85, I mean, that's, that's 25% of the regular cost right there. $0.52 cents a week, two twenty four a month. I mean, that's like, what, $0.07 cents a day? I mean, and we blow it out. Like, we're not – we go to work when it comes to covering Razorback sports, and we have done it. I've been doing this for 18 years. And we are one of the top 10 largest sites in the entire country that covers college sports in terms of team sites. One of the top 10 sites, easily one of the top 10s. I mean, it fluctuates a lot, but we are, we're in there and we do that. We're there for a reason. Uh, and it's because we work our tails off and we overanalyze everything and we don't leave any stone unturned. We just, we got a great team, me, Danny West. If you haven't read Curtis Wilkerson's basketball content, I mean, he just does a fantastic job. Curtis has been with us over a year now and was just a fantastic addition. We got a new guy also, Andrew Ellis. Our growth has allowed us to continue to expand, add talented people to the roster. So we're excited about all that. And you will be too. Go to hawgsports.com. There's no promo code or anything. Just sign up. You'll get the deal. All right, I'll quit talking now, and we'll get on with the show. I just had to get my promo out there again. We don't do this show because it makes a lot of money, I promise. Trey, oh, Biddy. Brady Fireball Burnett says, will there be any fan day for the last fall game? I don't think so. I mean, they didn't last year, but I have not heard anything about a fan day. Robert Hampton says, hi from Cross. Justin Cummins says, Trey, love the show. I watch it every week and more news on Cam Little. I think he's going to be clutch for the Hogs this year. I think we went into that pretty good bit, but I think the one thing that stood out to me about Sam Pittman talking is like they put him in a pressure situation for a 57-yard field goal and he made it and it would have been good from 65. I mean, you never know when the lights are on, right? But uh, Cam Little was the number one ranked kicker in the country. We talked to Scott Fountain. I actually asked him a little bit about his special teams philosophy when it comes to recruiting. And when it comes to like if a guy's the number one or two ranked prospect in the country at his position, then that's a guy that they offer. Now, they can also bring in good players as walk-ons, and sometimes those players turn into great players and they get scholarship offers. But if they don't feel they have that on the roster, then they go out and offer them, which they did with Cam Little, which they did with Eli Stein, who's the deep snapper. Wouldn't surprise me to see him go after a punter in some capacity. Maybe not this year or maybe next year. I don't know. But um, they want to have a punter, deep snapper, and field goal kicker on scholarship at all times. And I don't blame him for that because I think the great programs do that. They did that at Georgia. They did that at Auburn when he was there. I think the great programs do that. And sometimes it means going out and getting a guy who's ranked number one or two at his position in the country. 
Sometimes it means developing a guy who's maybe a little lower rated who, you know, becomes worthy of a scholarship. But in my opinion, if you're starting for the University of Arkansas as a snapper, field goal kicker, or punter, you should be on scholarship. I just think that's the right way to do things. Why are, so many, why are a lot of people discounting KJ already on the message board that I missed something this offseason? No, I think just people are just, you know, you're hesitant to buy into anything, and I can understand that's a very important position. Everything hinges on him. There's so much on his shoulders. But also the fact that people love a new guy. Um, you know, people young, love the new quarterback. KJ was in that same situation. Get KJ in there, and now everybody's like, get Malik in there or something, you know. But um, there's no reason to be down on KJ right now. I think – I think he's probably going to have a good year. You just never know 100%. But things that we can touch and see right now, I think he's got a chance. Ray Sabres has been here three years. Love it better than Rivals. Yeah, we've been uh, we've been at 24-7 Sports over three years. I just renewed our contact with 24-7 Sports, so we'll be there for many years to come. We're excited about that. We're very pleased with where we are at 24-7 Sports. The difference before when we left, I, there were reasons for us to leave. And – I couldn't find any reasons for us to go at 24-7. Just very, very pleased with 24-7s, with the people that we deal with day-to-day, and, you know, just the product that we're able to produce. That's that's always our goal is we want to um, we want to make sure that we're providing the best product for our customers, and we couldn't do that without 24-7. Kevin Gill says, Trey, have you seen all the evaluations based on the quarterback based off the quick video clips? Apparently, <laughs> we're doomed. <laughs> yeah. Joyce Rasky said, enjoy the walk and talk. Joyce, I sent you several video, uh, several photos of Dylan Rathke, if you're still watching. I sent them on Messenger. We're not friends on Facebook, so I wasn't able to just like send them to you on your page, but uh, I sent them to you on Messenger. So check your Messenger. I sent you like seven or eight pictures I took of him. I did that just for you. Appreciate you tuning in. Steve Culver says, special teams win or lose games with the, the – with those, absolutely, Steve. I mean, there's not been enough discussed on special teams. I think they have a chance to be better. Like, there were instances last year, and we talk about, you know, well, COVID really hurt him on special teams. There were times where they would just lose a guy Friday night before. There was a time, the Auburn game, they lost eight guys on special teams that they had to replace. And sometimes you lose guys, so it's indirectly you lose a starter or something. So this guy needs to, you know, jump into this role. We got to take him off special teams. He can't play so many special teams and be expected to play this role. There's all kinds of things, and it all trickles down to special teams. So I've said before, I'm not pleased, and you shouldn't either. It, by any stretch, you should not be pleased with Scott Fountain and the special teams performance last year. But I'm willing to give him a little bit of leniency because I know the situation with COVID. I'm willing to do that. But this year, it's put up or shut up time. This is the year to put up or shut up. Now, Scott Fountain does a hell of a job recruiting also, and that goes overlooked. I mean, he's one of their top recruiters, and he's proven that over the years at Georgia and Auburn, and he's doing that at Arkansas. Ryan Horn says, what other 2023 recruits do you think we'll get next? Oh, that would have been a good question for Ryan. But, Ryan, sign up. Danny will answer that question for you in a heartbeat if you go to the Razor's Edge Premium Forum and ask that. He will answer that for you. Marco Giles says, glad to hear that Devin Bush is finally showing – up in discussions positively. Absolutely. We talked about Devin a good bit. Uh, Ray Staples says slusher in the mix for return game. He is. He's, he's in the mix for a kickoff return, and I like him back there. I saw him in the spring. I thought he looked very fluid, comfortable, very fast, faster than I thought he was. I like slusher in that role. But it's not decided yet. I think Ladarius Bishop's probably a decent possibility there. But to me, I like to see, like, unless Ladarius Bishop, if he's going to start at left corner, unless he's just difference maker level at uh, kickoff or punt return, either one, Greg Brooks too, in my opinion, unless they're just like difference maker level, then go with a younger guy. Go with an explosive younger guy. That's my opinion. Who's A guy who's not quite starting just yet. Like maybe a Bryce Stevens at punt return or a Chase Lowry at punt return or um, maybe a Rocket Sanders at, at kick return or, or Miles Slusher. What's the deal with Zach Zymus? I've heard nothing about him. He is rolling with the third group at safety right now. He's a 6'3", 230-pound safety. They like one really big safety back there. Jaden Johnson's another guy, really big safety, who's rolling with the second group. Jarrett Sidham said, when will Outley be back, and do you know, and you think he'll provide a legit contribution this season considering the death this week at tight end? I don't think it'll be this season. 
I don't know if he'll be back this season or not. They just said, you know, they weren't really comfortable yet. There was a 24-7, says Wade Gamble. There was a 24-7 article where the writer said his belo- he believed Texas is underrated. Do you think? Do you share that same sentiment? And if so, why? I haven't really dove in to Texas like I want to, and I'm going to do that soon. But it, I do know Steve Sarkeesian is a heck of a coach. I mean, he ran into all those troubles. At uh, he ran into all those problems that he had at uh, at Wash or no, not at Washington. He went from Washington where he had success to USC had all those problems. Um, and then still, you know, lands in the NFL as a coordinator, lands at Alabama as a coordinator, gets a Texas head job. I mean, that shows you a lot what they think about him as a coach, given, you know, all the stuff that he's dealt with in the past. I'm not saying, you know, everybody has their problems, makes mistakes, and you can come back from that, and I guess that's what he's done. Uh, but they seem really keen on him as a court, as a, as a play caller, and, uh, and he's had success as a head coach, particularly at Washington. Now, they do have a battle for the starting quarterback job, and it is a new coach and a new culture change. And, you know, do they, do they like him? Do they, you just never, you never know 100%. Now, you probably find out some stuff pretty quickly with how they play Louisiana, but that's not a pushover game. Louisiana, Louisiana can beat you. They're capable of beating you. So you can't just overlook Louisiana to Arkansas. So I think that's a good thing for Arkansas. Are they underrated? I think it's impossible to say. I think 19 in the country preseason ranking is more than fair for Texas right now. And if they're better than that, then they can prove it. Ray Saber says, could Sanders be that guy at return? I think possibly. I like his size and speed. I think possible. Let me know if I'm still going live. It says I need to connect to stream live. So it's acting like I'm not streaming. How's the O line and up front blocking going? We talked. We pretty much covered that. Um, we have pretty limited time, so I'm not going to rehash stuff. But that was 38 minutes ago. That question was asked, so um, I hope we asked, answered that for you, Derek Scroggins. Adam Johnson says Dorian Gerald finally going to be healthy. Is he finally going to break out? I mean, he's been healthy in camp. You know, each of the last three years, it's just he's got hurt in that first game the last two years. So, and he's, you know, obviously healthy now, but uh, he's up to about 265, 270. I think that he has a lot of potential. I just think there are a lot of guys, and I didn't mention Dorian Gerald. I just skipped over him, you know, mentioning all the other guys a minute ago. There's just a lot of pieces up there, but I think Dorian uh, has a chance to be a, a guy that can really make plays for him this year. And I think adding a new defensive line coach is going to help him also. Philip Warren says, do you think K- you see KJ as being the kind of quarterback that can scramble for big chunks of yardage? I do. Or with his size, you see him more as a short yardage running. I do also there. I think he can do it both. I think that he can move a pile. I know he can. This guy's thighs are – I mean, he's a big dude. Like, And I think people kind of misconstrued what, you know, what was being said when he's 245 and people in the media are like saying, you know, KJ's huge. And the thing about it is most of the people, like people in the media that said that, like weren't really on the beat. You know what I mean? Like – there's like eight reporters in the pit, you know, newspaper writers, people like me, team sites, um, who ask questions and cover the team, go to practices every day, along with, you know, television news uh, people. But there's not that many people that are actually on the beat. And most radio people are, and that's just, you know, the nature of the beast. A lot of radio shows are going on during practice and stuff. But there's a lot of media people out there and, you know, fan media and stuff like that who don't cover the team but cover the media that covers the team. And I didn't hear anybody who's on the regular beat among those reporters say K.J. Jefferson's fat. People kind of took that and ran with it for some reason. He's not. I mean, he could – yeah, he'll probably trim up. I mean, like even in weight training, guys, you spend, you know, part of the season, you know, months, part of the offseason bulking up. And then when's a great time to trim down? Fall camp, pretty good time when you're doing so much running and calorie burning to, to you know, to cut things up. Uh, but KJ is not – I mean, anybody who see him on the videos know this is not a out of sh- – like some of the stuff people said was just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Yancey Long says, Trey, will you wear a wife beater undershirt on the show <laughs> next week in support of KJ? I don't have one. I don't have. I don't wear undershirt. I'm not like a big sweater, I guess. I'm lucky in that regard. But uh, I don't understand the point of wearing those. Like, it's not getting your pits. You got, like, you, your heavy sweater right here in the middle or something, belly sweat guy. I don't understand the point of wearing those, uh, those styles of, of undershirts. But I don't wear any undershirts ever unless it's freezing outside or something, I guess, and I need a layer. Death of D-line will be there, says James Hill. I know a walk-on that is getting better every day and will contribute to the depth chart. 
Nick McMinn says, can we please James Hill? You talking about John Hill, James Hill? John Hill. John Hill's been – he's been working in there, getting a little bit of action. He's a good-sized dude. Is he uh, – John's from Dumas, I think. Freshman walk-on. Good-looking kid. But I bet that's who you're talking about, James Hill. Nick McMinn says, can we please convince Sam Pittman to grow a beard? <laughs> Jeremy Brigham says, is Andrew Parker actually going to have some depth at linebacker? Finally been hearing his name some coming this year. He's with the second group right now. He's he's uh, he's pretty firmly entrenched, I think, with the second group. Travis Sh- Stuck, Shellick says, no shave this season. You're not going to shave? Steve Culver says, experience is good at offensive line, but these guys need to prove it on the field. They do. And, you know, like Danny said, like really the massive guys are like – uh, you know, in that freshman, sophomore classes, Takias Crawford, Jalen St. John, um, Devon Manuel, who goes 363, 370 right now. Um, but there, I mean, there's some big, obviously, Myron Cunningham, Dalton Wagner, those guys are 325, 330. So those are big kids, too. Big kids. They're like 23 years old. But uh, yeah, but most, most of those really big, massive guys are in the younger classes, also. There's, I think there's a lot of reason to be encouraged with those guys from a talent standpoint, but you can't take away just the experience that these guys have. And I've talked before about, you know, four starters from the offensive line. They were 293 in 2019 average for the five starters. Four of those guys return, and they're average 25 pounds heavier. On average, it's 6'6", 316 pounds on the offensive line. A lot bigger. Adam Johnson says Dorian Gerald's second string right now because the transfers are that good or is he still not 100%? No. I mean, just the other day he was first string. They're just mixing it up a lot. I wouldn't say he's second string. I wouldn't say anybody's first or second string on the defensive line right now. In fact, I think the way things are going that you may be able to just rotate every series your defensive lineman. I really think that's possible, especially this first game. Let's just see in live action who's got it. And from there, then you start thinking about, okay, this is 60%. You know, this will be, you know, this will be, will be 30%. This group will be 10%, something like that. Uh, but for now, like, why not? I think you've got enough people just to rotate three. And, you know, you'll have injuries and stuff like that, and it'll sort itself out. But I wouldn't say anybody's first, second, or third team on defensive line right now. I mean, it is literally that competitive. Amazing. I mean, that's great. That is what you want. Trey, what do you think about Kendall Catalan? I think I think Arkansas has a group of walk-on wide receivers that are probably as good as they've had. Kendall Catalan, Warren Thompson, who's a former four-star recruiter transfer from Florida State, um, Harper Cole, who catches everything, John David White, who I think will help them this year, um, and Kendall Catalan. Chris Harris is another one. They've got a good group of walk-on wide receivers. And I like what Kendall Catalan has done. I just wonder when we get to the nuts and bolts of it, I think you're probably going to see some other wide receivers play more. He might get in some, but I think generally you're going to see uh, some of the other guys. Taylor Wallace says, how improved do you think our third down offense will be over last year? Well, they're bigger on the offensive line. They've got a guy in in K.J. Jefferson who can really move a pile. Um, You know, I like Traylon Smith, but I do wonder about that falling forward factor. Just falling forward on first, second down, third down, obviously, uh, makes a big difference. We saw that with LSU last year when Arkansas's defensive line was decimated, just how well uh, LSU got extra yardage and converted like 10 of 16 third down attempts, just ridiculous. So I think that they'll probably be better because of that. I think they'll be a better running team, but I also think you need to get some backs that can really fall forward. It matters. Jeremy Brigham says, it's definitely worth the subscription, especially at 75% off. I appreciate you mentioning that, Jeremy. Sign up, guys, if you haven't done so. Jake Belk says, what are you hearing about Hudson Clark? Do you think he can really compete with the starters? I mean, right now he's second group. We kind of covered that, uh, I think, earlier. But right now he's working second group. Taylor Wallace says, it's worth it at 0% off. Thank you, Taylor. I appreciate that. I mean, guys, I posted on Twitter also what, what our subscribers say, what the people who follow us say. Um, and it's it's not 0% off. It's 75% off. We've got a chance right now to be number one in the country also in this on this promo. Everybody in 24-7 Sports Network is, is doing it. We win this contest a lot, and I want to win it again. Miami's number one right now. They're number one, but we're closing the gap on them. I want to be number one. And I always say this to people, and this has been my attitude, and I'm, I'm, ins- I'm crazy. I, I know I am. Like, I'm, I'm obsessive-compulsive about stuff. I just can't 
can't not do things a certain way. I like things to be a certain way. And I know you probably like that too. And that's how I'm big on presentation, just big on outworking people on stuff. If I'm doing something, I want to be the best at it. And I think that's one reason I hope that we are in the situation we are. And I have team members like Curtis Wilkerson, Danny West feel the same way who want to be the best. I don't want to be the, you know, what are we at sixth, seventh largest site in the 24 seven sports network. I want to be the, the biggest site. I want to win this contest. And I think what we do at Hog Sports can translate in other Arkansas businesses, Arkansas sports, and just show people that, hey, we're a state of 2.9 million people, but we're going to outdo you because we're going to outwork you. We're going to be more creative than you. We're just going to do things better than you as a state. And Arkansas can do that as a football program. I 100% believe that. I know that we are limited and our in the size of our state, but we got bigger size than some of the biggest markets in sports. We have a bigger side at Hog Sports than some of the biggest markets in sports, and it's because we work our tails off. And Arkansas can do that too. Yeah, we have we have inherent disadvantages. We're not a large state. We're not a massively forty thousand uh, you know uh, population university either. What is it like? It's like twenty something, twenty six, twenty seven now. I mean, it's bigger than when I went to school. I think it was like fourteen when I went to school. But we can overcome those things. Arkansas doesn't have a huge background in recruiting. That's it. That's it. The fan support's there. The money's there. The facilities are there. Everything is there. They're in the right conference. Everything is there. It's just that they have to go five and a half hours away to get to Dallas instead of two and a half hours away, which I always say is the ideal distance to go away to college. It's when you're not too close. Sorry, Mom, I see you on there. Hi, Mom. It's not too close to home. So you're expected to go home every weekend, but it's it's close enough to where it's not a big hassle. That's how you want to be from college. Five and a half hours isn't bad from Dallas. But there are things you can overcome there. Scott Alexander says, new member regarding KJ. Appreciate you, Scott. Thank you for joining up. I'm with you. Against Mizzou, he did some things that looked like someone that was a fifth-year senior, but it was Mizzou. Yeah. Now, Missouri wasn't horrendous on defense. I hear people say that Missouri had the worst defense in the SEC. No, they didn't. They were, they were actually – now, they weren't great, but they were okay on defense when you look at the numbers. He's had a full year of development with Browse. I'm optimistic he'll do well. I like to stay on the optimistic side, too. And I've kind of pulled myself back because there's a time where I'm like, oh, man, eight wins? Could they get eight wins? I'm pull myself back because I know I have a tendency, just like you as we talked last week, to drink Kool-Aid a little bit. But, guys, I'm starting to lean a little bit more towards seven wins. And I'll tell you this, too. These coaches up there, candidly behind the scenes, they think they got a good team. And I'm not talking about getting up at the podium and talking to, to media. I'm talking about just, you know, shooting bull off to the side, talking about it a little bit, you know. They think they got a good team. Like, they really think they got a good team. And I'm telling you, too, I've talked to coaches in the past who thought, you know, yeah, we, I mean, I think we'll be okay. You know, we got, we got this issue, we got that. You know, we're going we're gonna to struggle against this team, you know. It's different. It's different the way they talk about it. And to me, there's some merit in that, you know. I'm not going to, like, talk about who's telling me all this stuff, but people used to trust. <laughs> so, Chuck Goodner says, looking forward to the walk and talks. Yeah, we'll do the walk and talks this year. Absolutely. Janice Stewart says, just tuned in. You think they'll? You think we'll win six games? I've heard another outlet, us only winning the non-conference games. No, I think that they – I do think that, the, that six games is in the car. I think that they're going to a bowl game now. Anything beyond that, probably maybe gravy. But I think that they – and, again, it, so much depends on KJ. If KJ's terrible, then they're gonna they're not going to be good. But the pieces are around him for if he is good, then they can be a pretty good team, like really take a step forward as a program this year. And if they do that, I think they'll pick up in recruiting also because I think that's been hurting them just years and years and years of this. I mean, I mean we're coming up on a decade of just not even mediocrity. Like, mediocrity is a word that sounds worse than it is, but it really just kind of means middle of the pack. They've been – I mean, this has been you know, the worst 10 years in Arkansas football history. The worst 10 years ever. And it wasn't that long ago where 2011, top 10. 2010, top 12. 2006, where did they finish? Did they finish ranked 2006? 2006, they were – I mean, they won the SEC. Uh, they kind of faltered there down the stretch, but um, they won the Western Division went to the Scissors Bowl. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a lot of really good seasons in a pretty short amount of time considering these last 10 years have just been 
I mean, aside from a couple years with Brett Bielema, it has just been bleh, awful. It's, it's, it's awful. It's been awful. And there's no excuse. There's no excuse giving what Arkansas has. And I've talked about it before just a little bit ago. The one problem is they're not right next door to Dallas. That's the problem. They're not right next door to Atlanta. Casey Oden says, have they said there will be any kind of mass mandates or anything restriction on how many fans will be allowed in the stands? I mean, right now, the, all I've heard is that it's full capacity. I don't know. I think maybe they say mass might be recommended. Now, I think Fayetteville, I think we're under a mask mandate right now. So I think you have to wear a mask inside, but I don't know if a stadium counts as being inside, does it? I don't know. I don't know what they'll do on that. I do know that COVID is spreading still. And, yeah, I mean, it's still – Still an issue. Um, by the way, I wanted to um, express my condolences to um, my 2 be aunt, fiance, my uncle Bill, uh, passed away yesterday of COVID and uh, hit us pretty hard. So he was a great dude. Uh, also, I wanted to uh, mention uh, a friend of mine's uh, father-in-law, Gary, uh, Gary Reynolds out of Little Rock, who's also a big hog fan, a great guy uh, who passed away with a long battle with uh, – a terminal illness there. Um, so still going around. People be, just be careful out there, people. I'm not here to tell you what to do, but, um, still getting people. Braden Jones says, do you think Warren Thompson, Jaquel and Crawford are adding quality depth at wide receiver? I don't know on Thompson yet. He's bit, had a bit of a hamstring. Some people have said some good things. I think Jaquel and Crawford, probably starts for him this year. I think it's going to be Trey Knox, Debion Warren, and, and Jaqueline Crawford. Possi- or excuse me, excuse me, Traylon Burks, uh, Jaqueline Crawford, and Debion Warren. I think it's going to be who starts. And if it's not Jaqueline, then I think uh, Trey Knox. But De- uh, Jaqueline Crawford has done some stuff that I didn't see him do in the spring. I think maybe just getting more comfortable out there. But he's done some stuff that, um, to me, gives me reason to be encouraged about him. Tyler Dixon said, White looked good during the spring ball. Is he going to be our two or three receiver this year? Um, I mean, he's going to – I think he'll play, but I don't think he's going to be that high up the list. Nathan Dunham says, what do you think of Bo Lemmer's progress and potential play to play at guard? I mean, Ricky Stromberg should be back this week at some point and possibly scrimmage on Saturday. And when that happens, then, then Lemmer will go back to the second team. But he's been rolling with the second team. Uh, or excuse me, the first team with Stromberg out and Ty Clary moving to center. So Clary will move back to center. I think Clary's got that spot locked down. But Bo Limmer could potentially start in the future and play. I mean, he started five games for him last year. Jay Zone says, any update on Stromberg? I think I just gave that. Probably back for the second scrimmage. Uh, will John David White, Kennel Catalan get playing time? I think they may see some spot duty, but I don't know. I think – I just think there are other guys that are a little bit ahead of them. Overall, I mean, and those guys have done some good things. I don't mean to say that. Cherry Wood says, do we still get uh, free Paramount Plus when you sign? Uh, that doesn't come with this offer, not with this particular offer. Now, we do do a dollar offer. We have $1 off, or excuse me, $1 for your first month. And once that promo ends, um, then you do get the Paramount deal. Now, we'll say every once in a while, and it's been maybe almost a year since we've done this, but every once in a while, we'll open that Paramount Plus deal up to everybody, whether you're on a promo or not. So I'm just saying, sometimes we do that. But it's right now on this deal, no, it doesn't. But just keep your eyes peeled. Kyle Eddy says, I'm hearing Catalan showing out at wide receiver. What do you think? A lot of people talking about Catalan. I mean, he, he is doing well. I mean, he caught that 15-yard out and turned it into a 50-yard t- touchdown. Steve Miller says, where's Devin Bush? Popular question. We talked about him a little bit. He's over at backup left cornerback. He's with the second group now. So he is going to play if he stays in that spot. Kyle Eddy says, is Rocket the real deal? I think he has a chance to be. I like his size. I like his speed. I like his toughness. I like his gold teeth. I mean, if you go look at you go look at Rocket Sanders' profile pick that he just took on, uh, on the University of Arkansas uh, football roster. That's how you take a profile pick. Just big old dude, gold teeth. Grinning, this is me, unapologetic. That is a profile pick. Love that from Rocket Sanders. One of my favorite new players just because of that. All right, everybody.
I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up now. I really appreciate everybody joining us. Listen to my spiel. I know a lot of you guys are already members and ladies are already members on the site. Um, so if you've got a buddy who might be interested, you think your dad or grandfather or somebody might like it, let them know. This deal ends tomorrow night on August 18th at 10.59 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So you have until then to sign up. But go ahead and do it now. You're going to like the coverage you get. we got practice here just – oh, it's almost 1 o'clock – Got practice here right around the corner, uh, but you're going to like what you get at hogsports.com. Again, 75% off. That breaks down to $2.26 a month, $0.52 a week, like $0.07 a day, maybe a little over $0.07 a day, but not much more. And then um, what is it? $26 and something, $26 for the whole year. I mean, that is an amazing deal. 25% of the normal cost, 75% off hawgsports.com there's no promo code just go to the site you'll see the banner ad sign up for it help us beat Miami I don't want to lose to Miami in this contest we want to be number one at Arkansas in everything that we do that's the standard the standard is number one don't care what anybody says about baby steps or any of that stuff it's for this it's for your business it's for Arkansas as a state and it's for uh, the University of Arkansas as well number one all right everybody we'll be back with you guys soon it's possibly we do a, a show at the end of the week um, I don't know since we did this on Tuesday we bumped it back a day but um, we'll definitely be back with you guys on Monday if not I don't know we might be we might pop in before then but I want to thank Danny West for joining us answering all the recruiting questions I want to thank all of you for tuning in with your questions and for your loyalty and for enjoying our free content and our hopefully VIP content as well all right everybody this has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com and we'll catch you next time 